so I'm going to uh, go through and record some of this lecture. I'm looking at this material, and I think I have way too much for one class. I think maybe I should have, um, well, my hair is terrible today, um, broken this down into uh, multiple classes. It's, this is actually one of the coolest classes in the entire semester, so I was actually kind of I'm kind of thinking it I hurt myself by not extending it, and uh, I think you're going to find it to be uh, very useful stuff. Okay, so um, we need to uh, do graphical synthesis of a four bar a quicker turn linkage. A lot of really cool stuff. So, by synthesis, making a mechanism do uh, we what we want it to do, basically. It's design, but uh, they like to use the word synthesis. Um, as opposed to analysis, I guess. We would say that the you know, analysis thing already exists, synth and we figure out the motion. Here we have some motion, and we figure out the mechanism to make the motion. Um, so it's really sort of like a de design. So I actually looked this up in, in the dictionary. Combining the constituent elements of separate material or abstract entities into a single or unified entity. The separating of any material or abstract entity into two constituent elements. A complex whole forming by combining. Hmm. Okay. Um, the process of combining objects or ideas into a complex whole compare. I don't know. I just think of it as designing. So um, many books start out talking about synthesis. Uh, when it, Many mechanism books talk about uh, linkage synthesis by uh, talking about different generations, right? So um, making my notes to myself, I wrote down, well, let me uh, switch over to the camera here. Switch over to the camera, and kaboom. All right. So um, for function generation, um, I think of it as being uh, uh, um, sort of like a box, right? Ch -ch -ch -ch, where we have input and output, right? So we uh, maybe we have some function coming in. We 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 spin in, right? goes into the box and output we 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 get something out right so some process where we're generating um, like this a crank or follow displacement angles and the function now is to have some type of um, uh, thing happening to the coupler another one we can have is path uh, generation so like we have maybe some points uh, and man we would really like this thing to be located at these points, right? At these discrete points. Um, the thing is that they could also, you know, there could also be solutions that look like that right there, right? Um, and that's just an exaggeration. But when trying to generate, we also have like these, sometimes we'll call them precision points, right? And we'll maybe we'll have a, the, some points on the point of a coupler, and we want them to be at these discrete points. Uh, and, and they, they need to be at some, I, I almost said at some time, but we don't necessarily have to say they have to be at this time. But it's really the path, the generation uh, that we might want to do. We also might want to actually, uh, sometimes we, we look and we, we're going to do this, uh, I think, in the next class, where we see that there's some path and we, we, we have a particular shape and then we look up from like a, a collection of uh, paths and find, uh, uh, oh, hey, this is the combination that someone found. It creates a path. That's gross. Um, and uh, let's just uh, pick out this recipe uh, of, uh, of proportions of size that can make that, that particular path shape. So that's also kind of path generation. Um, then we also have motion generation, where we might have something that looks like we, we have a particular shape right here, and then it needs to be in at some other point, not only does it need to, does the thing need to be at a point, but also needs to have an orientation, right? And so we're we're limiting ourselves even more. And there might not be it might not be possible to have uh, this type of orientation. So you have to be kind of careful there. Um, so you can't over constrain the thing. Like say here are all the requirements and it has to do this. It might not be possible to make a mechanism that does that. So there's a it's a little bit of added difficulty. So there's the function generation, path generation, and motion generation. Now the most basic element that we will deal with when uh, doing a synthesizing a four bar is something that we're going to refer to as the dyad. 
right? So, um, and or the driving dyad. That will allow us to make a four bar uh, do something that we want to do, like to rock back and forth. Uh, and, and between uh, two set points, depending on uh, the shape of the dyad. So we, we can add a dyad um, to just about anything to kind of control it. And now what this turns is, is now it's a six bar, all right? So we just turned our four bar into a six bar by making this right here, and uh, we can accomplish a lot of things. So we start off with um, our uh, dyad, making a dyad, right? And creating some angular displacement here. And I gotta remember how to do all this stuff. We need to have some drafting tools uh, to be able to do this. And maybe I should have told you to go um, rob a freshman, uh, that, uh, re re recent, uh, uh, re recent uh, uh, finisher of the graphic communication ES220. Go, gra go, go grab that freshman and, and start taking their, uh, taking their toys away. Um, because it'd be nice to have uh, some of these um, as part of your thing and a, and a compass, right? So maybe I should have like uh, get, get you a toolkit right here. Um, so the two, if we want two position, and we want to. Uh, uh, so let's say we, we. This is a rocker arm, right? And we want this rocker arm to go between this point and this point, going through this angle, right here. Well, the simplest way um, to do to do this is to add a dyad to it, and we'll make a four bar uh, from this, right? So. Uh, what we want to do is go from the center to the center and draw a line. First, we'll make it nice. We'll make it a, 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 a nice straight thin line right there. And um, what we'll do here is take um, we'll bisect this, right? So we want to we want to bisect this. I will use my. And you're remembering how to bisect a line. If you don't remember, then uh, you know you're gonna make your former drafting teacher very sad. Looking at the time here, I am running out of time. All right, so you go to that point and go to that point right there, and voila, you have bisected this line. Ta-da! Isn't that nice? We've bisected the line. And now we can um, pick off a radius. All right, so the, uh, we, wanted the, we wanted this distance right here that we're gonna measure. Right there, so we're gonna measure that radius. And now th that's gonna decide, whoops. I, I, get, oh, I gotta be careful here because my um, the arm of this is really loose. I don't know if there's a way to tighten that up. Looks like I tried to tighten it up already there. But maybe I'll put, put some glue in there. Um, once again, it's, it's, it's foiling me. Here we go. All right. Here we go. That's, that's the radius of that. We are going to arbitrarily, actually, it might be, you know, when we're measuring the thing, sometimes it's nice to come up with whole numbers right there. It's not exactly two inches. Not exactly two inches. No, it's actually uh, one point, uh, that's 1.7, right? Almost 1.7. 1 1.8, uh, that looks like 1.8. So, um, be nice to have the, the link that we make right here be something even. Let's pick it out to be three. Right, we got to be careful of the Grashoff thing, right? We're gonna be so when, once we get done synthesizing something, we have to check out the Grashoff. But let's see, double check that that's the right. Once again, it's the this thing will drive me nuts. How come you won't stay the right? I tell you, the bad carpenter blames his tools, but. My tools are making me mad. I'm gonna double check it again. Oh, it didn't change, okay. So what we do here, and I picked this arbitrarily. I picked that distance right there arbitrarily. But 
what that will say to us. Hmm. Actually, I probably should have picked, uh, but it'll, it'll be fine. So um, what we're going to do here, what, how to show you is that this, what we've just picked, is going to be the new pivot point right there, right? So here is one of the ground points. Here's one of the ground points. So now there's going to be a ground link that's right in there. And let's draw this thing so okay so here is the furthest extent of the thing so if that's true then that right there and this link length draw it up to there i'm trying to make it look like a link right here right here so that's the link and then right here is the um, the crank right here. So here's the crank, here's the coupler, and here's the rocker that we would be designing uh, from this, right? Um, it's drawn in the extended direction. We can also, maybe I will draw it as a kind of dash line, dash, 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 dash. Here would be the position of the crank when um, they're oh, now the, the some for a little portion of it the, the crank and the coupler will be overlapped right but that's going to um, that that's that's going to be the position where this uh, rocker is back over here right and so what we've achieved is when we make this crank move it'll make the rocker move from here to right there right um, but um, we want to be careful with these dimensions, right? So uh, I'll take this live. Oh, right here, that looks like it's just about four right there. So um, that's going to be our L1 is going to be uh, four inches according to this right here. And then so L2, it, that's really the radius uh, that we picked right here. And mine, mm, I wish uh, I could see that a little bit better. I would say if that's five, six, six point five, so point six five. L two is equal to zero point point six five inches right there. Because I have a, a ruler that's tenths of inches. Um, and then so the coupler here, L three, is going to be we could go either we could either go from here to here to there or we can go from uh, here to there, right there. Okay, so that's going to be um, three, five, six, seven, three point seven. And then this was always decided on. This was already decided for us, and that looks close to being uh, one point five, six, seven, eight, one point eight. So L four is one point eight. And these are inches. So um, the long one is equal to four inches, and the short one is equal to 0 0.65. So L plus S is in our heads. You should be able to do that in your head, don't you? <laughs> 4.65. And then um, P L is, uh, oh, I don't know. 3.7 and Q is 1.8. So uh, P plus Q, I actually have to use my calculator for that. Is that 4.5? Looks like 4.5. 5.5. Okay. All right. So since L plus S is less than P plus Q, grash off. So this thing could actually be made. So let's um, take a look, and I have um, made several of these. This one says this is example one. That doesn't look like example one. Yeah, okay. So there it is. There's this uh, the one, and let's see. We go to the motion study and watch him. Come back and forth. Now this isn't going to be the same as uh, 
the one I, is, isn't going to be the same as um, the one I made on paper right here because the one I made on paper I arbitrarily chose the uh, where I was going to put that point I did try to I was at least I had the best intentions of trying to pick out a length that was going to be an even amount um, but as you see uh, I, I failed at that. I ro royally failed. Where I, mm, it's because the thing is, it, it, it's sort of like the combination. I think if you added those two together of link two and link three, mm, maybe not even then. So anyway, I tried uh, to come up with something that would be like an even number. Um, so I think this is a good place to stop this video uh, in terms of length. So 15 minutes is long enough for a video. We'll be back for more.